Have you ever wondered how the ancient Romans celebrated their festivals, or how their traditions influenced the world we live in today? Picture a society where festivals were not just events, but pivotal parts of culture, binding the threads of Roman life together. From gladiatorial games to religious rituals, these festivities painted the vibrant canvas of Roman society. Today, we unearth one such celebration, a festival so grand it eclipsed others in its time. In this video we'll be delving into the epic festival of Saturnalia, an ancient Roman tradition that was anything but ordinary. Saturnalia was not just any festival, it was a celebration that turned Roman society upside down. Originating from the worship of Saturn, the ancient Roman god of agriculture, wealth and time, Saturnalia was a festival of decadence, merriment, and societal inversion that took place in the heart of winter, typically around December 17th to the 23rd. During this festival, Rome was awash with a sense of liberation, as the societal norms were upended. Slaves were treated as equals or even masters, gambling was allowed in public and schools and courts of law were closed. It was a time when the usual Roman stoicism was thrown to the wind and joy, laughter and revelry ruled the streets of Rome. Saturnalia also represented a break from the Romans' daily grind. As an agricultural society, the Romans were tied to the rhythms of the seasons, and the festival marked the end of the autumn planting season. It offered a much-needed period of rest before the hard work of the spring. But beyond the merriment and the break from work, Saturnalia was also a time for Romans to express social solidarity. It was a festival that brought everyone together, regardless of their social status. Indeed Saturnalia was a time when the traditional social order was flipped on its head, a true testament to Roman ingenuity and desire for revelry. Now let's talk about the Temple of Saturn. During Saturnalia, Romans transformed their homes with vibrant decorations, opting for wreaths and lush greenery. The conventional toga attire was set aside in favor of colorful garments known as synthesis. Even those in servitude were granted reprieve from their labor, joining in the revelries and in some instances taking the honored position at the head of the table while their masters served them. Rather than engaging in their regular occupations, Romans immersed themselves in various festive activities during Saturnalia. Gambling, singing, musical performances, extravagant feasts and communal gift-giving became the norm. Gifts often included wax taper candles referred to as serae, symbolizing the return of light after the solstice. As Saturnalia drew to a close on the Sigillaria, Romans exchanged small terracotta figurines known as Signalaria, with friends and loved ones. This tradition may have been rooted in earlier customs involving human sacrifice. Regarded as the liveliest among Roman holidays, Saturnalia earned the praise of the poet Catullus, who famously called it the best of times. The festivities were so exuberant that the author Pliny reportedly constructed a soundproof room to continue his work, undisturbed during the boisterous celebrations. Established in the 4th century AD as a replacement for its predecessor, the Temple of Saturn held a pivotal role as the ceremonial hub during later Saturnalia festivities in Rome. Positioned in the northwest corner of the Roman Forum, the temple saw the commencement of celebrations with the public sacrifice of a young pig on the initial day. Traditionally featuring a cult statue with woolen bonds tied around its feet, the Temple of Saturn took on a symbolic transformation during Saturnalia. The loosening of these bonds during the festival signified the liberation of the god Saturn. Within numerous Roman households, a Saturnalicius princeps, or the leader of Saturnalia, often dubbed the Lord of Misrule, was playfully selected during the celebrations. Typically a member of lower standing within the household, this figure took on the responsibility of instigating mischief throughout the festivities, mocking guests, donning eccentric attire, playfully pursuing women and girls, and more. The concept behind this mock king was to govern over chaos, disrupting the conventional Roman order. A prevalent holiday tradition such as hiding coins or small objects in cakes can be traced back to Saturnalia, where this practice served as a means of selecting the mock king. The origins of several midwinter celebrations in contemporary Western cultures can be traced back to Saturnalia, thanks to the Roman Empire's expansion into Britain and other parts of Europe between the 2nd century BC and the 4th century AD. During this period, the Romans suppressed older seasonal rituals practiced by the Celts and various other groups. Notably, Christmas, a Christian holiday, bears the imprint of the ancient Roman festival, Saturnalia. Many of the traditions associated with Christmas including the timing of its celebration find their roots in Saturnalia. The Bible provides no specific date for the birth of Jesus, 
with some theologians suggesting a probable spring birth based on references to shepherds and sheep in the nativity story. However, by the 4th century AD, Western Christian churches opted to celebrate Christmas on December 25th. This strategic choice allowed them to seamlessly integrate the Christian holiday with Saturnalia and other popular pagan midwinter traditions. The convergence of these cultural elements contributed to the shaping of the Christmas festivities as we recognize them today. And so, as we delve into the past, we find that our own traditions aren't so new after all. Saturnalia, in all its wild, raucous glory, was a precursor to the holiday festivities we know and love today. As we wrap up our journey into the past, we're left with a vivid picture of Saturnalia, a festival that encapsulates the spirit of ancient Rome in all its wild, raucous glory.